वेलकाम टू माई उइकलि मार्केट राउंड आप सेकेंड फेब्रुआर टू थाउजेंड टोटी आई एम सागर नंदी आई यूज टू वार्क इन इनफरमेशन टेक्नोलॉजी मोस्टलि इन सिंगापुर आई रिटायर सेभरल इयार्स ए गो एंड नाउ आई एम लिविंग इन थाइलैंड सुइंग ट्रेडिंग स्टक्स यूजिंग दू ट्रेडिंग सिसटेम्स एंड टेक्निक्स You may watch this and other of my videos on my YouTube channel Trading Profitably. This is my email ID tradingprofitably@gmail.com. I regularly share stock and market analysis in the Traders Forum sagarnandi.com and also on my Twitter page sagarnandi. All these resources are open to the public. and you are most welcome to make use of them disclaimer first this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques i use the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual in today's topics, I look at oil and gold using technical charts. why because they tend to impact related stocks then i will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis techniques where you find the truly high probability low risk trades by aligning forces from the market level sector industry level fundamental and also technical level that was the last slide of my presentation i will continue now with the live system i am starting the commodities analysis using oil etf uso analyzing that using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template together i call this at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds that is using one of the unambiguous trade setups that are available in q systems and you can decide if a trade setup is applicable or not at the right edge by using the unambiguous checklist associated with each of the setups Let's look at the charts. Oil has dropped sharply in last 4 weeks. It reverts from the watermark resistance level in the weekly chart and it was also at the watermark resistance in the daily chart at that time. If you are following my market roundups then you know that when oil was at this point everybody was probably bullish on oil because of the middle east tension at that time and they were bullish and i suggested looking for a shorting opportunity because price was inside a range both in the weekly as well as in the daily charts and it was at the higher end of the range that was a very useful analysis because from there oil dropped sharply almost in a straight line it is over sold in the daily chart shown by the stretch band indicator red means over sold and it is over sold in the weekly chart also that is not a time that i suggest shorting i suggested shorting at the very top now in fact it is at the lower end of the sideways range there is no long opportunity yet 
it has dropped sharply if it finds support at this watermark support level in the daily chart and reverses up from there then you may look for a long trade setup using the bounce technique that is there in the Q trading system right now there is no swing trade setup in USO gold ETF GLD the weekly is going up for several weeks this was the first week when the backdrop candle color turned bullish cyan since then it is remaining bullish that is cyan color you may use the backdrop candle color to catch a trend early and stay in the trend is there a swing trade setup in gold right now not using my techniques it is bullish however the daily is at the upper boundary level that is too extended for me to take a new long trade right now after the commodities analysis i continue with the market level analysis the aim is to decide if the market is bullish or bearish if bullish then i am going to look for long trades only for stocks and if it is bearish i am going to look for short trades in stocks in the previous market roundup i analyzed the market at this point this was the friday one week ago the weekly closed at this candle at that time i mentioned that even if the market drops the initial drop may not be severe why because there were memory support lines in multiple market etfs this week initially market drop it found support at the memory support line as i expected it bounced up from there and later in the week it dropped again now in the weekly chart the memory is broken with a bearish shape candle and the backdrop candle color is also bearish magenta in the daily it has broken below this memory support on friday it gave a magenta flow color candle is there a swing trade setup in spy right now the backdrop candle color is magenta traffic light candle color is also magenta and it has created lower high and lower low in the daily chart if you apply the unambiguous checklist for the go with flow trend following setup then you will see that all the checklist conditions are being met therefore you have a go with flow trend following short trade setup as of friday's market close is there any other trade setup yes because it has broken below the memory support line in the daily chart in fact it broke below the memory support in the weekly also and the breakout happened with extreme bearish pressure very high volume also because the breakout happened with extreme bearish pressure and the stop is not very far away it is also giving a low risk breakout short setup therefore spy is giving two trade setups both in the short direction one is trend following go with flow setup and another is breakout short trade setup on friday this may not be a time to look for bullish trades you may be careful about long positions you are holding and look for shorting opportunities let's see if we confirm the same view from the other market etfs analysis and later on with the sector level analysis as the ktf qqq this is also looking weak but stronger than spy 
you can know that from this relative performance line the dotted copper color line tilting up the weekly backdrop candle color has turned bearish and the shape is also bearish in the daily chart friday we had a magenta that is bearish flow color candle earlier it dropped but then recovered and on friday it fell again similar to spy however it could close above the memory support line therefore we didn't have any short trade setup in qqq on friday Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA. This is weaker than SPY because the relative performance is tilting down. Otherwise, it is looking very similar to SPY. Broke below the weekly memory support, broke below multiple daily memory support lines. Very similar to SPY, initially dropped, tried to recover and then fell sharply again. On Friday, it gave extreme bearish pressure. As of Friday, it is giving a go with flow that is trend following short trade setup as well as a breakout trade setup in the short direction. Russell 2000 ETF IWM It displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal one week ago and the backdrop candle color had already turned bearish one week ago. That weakness continued, the backdrop candle color remains bearish and the shape is also bearish. In the daily, similar to the other ETFs, initially price dropped tried to recover somewhat and then it fell sharply again. Right now price is close to the lower boundary level. It is looking weak, maybe a bit too extended to the downside to take a new short trade using the daily chart. It continues to be the weakest of the four market ETFs. You may look for a short setup using intraday charts if the market continues to go down next week. Let's look at some market breadth information. Here I am looking at the NASDAQ composite index weekly chart and also NYSE composite index weekly chart along with three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume this market breadth information tells us what is going on under the hood what is going on i shared it one week ago the weekly was bullish in nasdaq weekly was bullish in NYSE also. However, NYSE had displayed the bearish headwind signal. Looking at that, I suggested caution. Price was above the memory support in NYSE one week ago. This week, it decisively broke below that with a bearish shape and bearish color candle. NASDAQ Weekly candle color is neutral, though the shape is bearish. There is a memory support in the weekly chart of NASDAQ, however, that is some distance away. The internal stand bearish. After several weeks, the new high low for NASDAQ also turned bearish. Magenta. Advanced decline and up down volume became more bearish. For NYSE, the new high-low is still remaining green, positive. However, advanced decline, up-down volume became more bearish. The market breadth information using NASDAQ and NYSE 
composite charts is also showing weakness of the market. I looked at the market ETFs earlier using Q charts. Now let me look at some of the major market indices using advanced decline over one day, that is Friday, over two days and over five days. This is for S&P 500 SPX index. On Friday, 94% of the stocks declined. Over two-day period, that is Thursday, Friday, 80% of the stocks are down. And over the whole week, five-day period, 80% of the stocks are down. This is showing severe bearishness for the SPY constituents. Let's have a look at the NASDAQ 100 constituents. From the Q charts, I showed that the QQQ is stronger than SPY. However, that is because of some large cap stocks going up. Overall, NASDAQ constituents are actually weaker than S&P 500 constituents this week. This is the data. On Friday, 94% of the NASDAQ 100 constituents are down. This was the same percentage in S&P 500 constituents. However, the two-day percentage here is worse, 84% down. Five-day percentage is also worse. 85% of the constituents are down. QQQ or NASDAQ 100 is in fact weaker than SPY when we drill down into the constituents. Again, it is showing severe bearishness of the market. Dow Jones Industrials average constituents on Friday, 87% of the stocks are down. Over the two-day period, 87% down again. And over the whole week, 81% stocks are down. Again, showing bearishness. Lastly, let us look at S&P 1500 constituents. On Friday, 94% down. Over two-day period, 85% down. And over the whole week, 83% down. Everything is looking bearish. Is this bearishness seen only in the USA market? Let's do a constituent analysis of several other global markets. This is Australia market using the All Ordinaries Index. On Friday, it was in fact bullish. 51% stocks went up, 33% went down. Over two-day period, 51% went down, more than 40% that went up. And over the weekly period, 60% stocks went down and 34% went up. When we look at broad indices, it may be better to look at the weekly period to assess the health of the market. Looking at that, Australian market is also bearish, 60% went down, 34% went up, however not as bearish as the USA market. What about Hong Kong market or India market? I am not going to look at the China market because China stock exchange had been closed since the Lunar New Year. Let's look at the Hong Kong market and India market as well. Hang Seng Index, Hong Kong market. On Friday, 71% stocks are down over two-day period. As bad as possible, 100% stocks are down and over five days also, all stocks, 100% of the constituents of Hang Seng Index are down. This is extreme bearish. 
if this is any reflection of the china stocks then when the market opens for the chinese stock exchange we can expect a huge sell off what about the india market i am using the nifty 500 the broader index for india instead of the narrower benchmark nifty 50 this is also very bearish on friday in fact on saturday this week saturday market was open because it is open during the budget session and the budget session was on saturday on saturday 87% stocks went down over two day period 85% stocks are down and over five day period 83% stocks are down this is also bearish we looked at the usa market indices and the asian market indices so that people from europe are not unhappy let me look at the futsi index the uk index futsi 100 on friday 83% stocks were down over two day period 80% down over five day period 92% stocks were down very bearish indeed that completes my market level analysis and the conclusion is pretty clear isn't it the market is bearish in the usa market several etfs broke down below their support lines memory trend lines the backdrop candle color for all the market etfs turned bearish daily traffic light candle color on friday also turned bearish nasdaq and nyse market breadth turned bearish the constituent analysis for the usa market indices shows bearishness extreme bearishness in fact and the bearishness is there not only in the usa market we saw that in the australian market to a lesser extent however hong kong market india market and uk market are also very bearish we have to conclude based on this data that the market outlook is now bearish in the previous market roundup i suggested not to look for any long trades or short trades because i was indecisive that has changed now the view based on the market level analysis is clearly bearish time to look for short swing trades and avoid long positions I regularly share stock and market analysis on my Traders Forum and on my Twitter page and if you look at them the recent post had been bearish from that you may have an idea during the week how I am looking at the market and the stocks This is my Traders Forum sagarnandi.com open to the public and i regularly share stock and market analysis under different categories both for the usa market and india market you may learn about the systems and techniques that i use from the topics under the category learn to trade and the member area is for the q systems user to download and install the system let's look at the latest posts in the usa market i shared this post a few days ago the semiconductor industry is decelerating today and you can see that in real time i was probably ahead of many other traders in analyzing the weakness of the semiconductor industry which had been very strong for a long time Let's see if that is true. I shared this post 9 days ago on January 24th. And I as usual attached the live 
360 degrees analysis using Q systems. What did I see? The semiconductor industry was strong for a long time. Even on that day, that day's data is shown under zero day column, that is 24th Jan, in the morning session, 10.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everything was looking bullish except the pace column on that day that showed deceleration. I could catch the deceleration in the morning hours on 24th Jan, probably ahead of many, many other traders. That gave me a chance to look for shorting the top opportunities. I then looked at some of the stocks in that industry and I found SWKS. As of that time, it was down by 4.2%. Overall, 13 stocks in the peer group were up and 46 were down as of that time. The valuation was medium using Q score. It was neither overvalued nor undervalued. Valuation was medium, however, earnings growth was very weak. It was down for three successive quarters and it was negative for previous two years as well. Revenue growth was also negative for the last three quarters and previous two years. In terms of earnings and revenue growth, it was looking weak. However, the stock was very close to the 52-week high, 0.09% below 52-week high. At a very high price level, I saw the industry started to decelerate after prolonged strength stock started to go down from the very top. That is why I told I was looking for a shorting opportunity and because the industry was strong it was going to be a shorting the top opportunity. Finally I could take the short trade only if the charts were looking bearish and I attached the snapshot that was also looking bearish. The weekly had a bearish shape candle and the daily had a false upside breakout with a bearish flow color candle and bearish pressure. At that time, you could short the stock right at the close of that day. This was a snapshot as of the morning session. If the chart looked similarly bearish, as of the close of that day, 24th Jan, you could take a short trade and put stop just above the recent high. This was what I shared on 24th Jan. And as for all my forum posts, I don't look back and say, wow, that stock made a big profit. All of these are live analysis. How did SWKS move after that? This is SWKS as of this Friday. The weekly has turned very bearish, both in shape and color, and the daily has fallen down as well. I shared the shorting idea on this day at the very top. Following the live 360 degrees analysis that I shared in the forum, you already covered more than the risk distance by Friday's close using my guideline, you would probably book partial profit and apply trailing stop in the remaining position to try to let profit run. This is one case where I will not exit full position. Why? Because the industry is looking weak. The stock fundamentals are weak. Earnings growth is negative And the chart is also looking very bearish. No reason to exit full position. You may continue to hold partial position, trying to let profit run. That was, once again, a very profitable trade. Very importantly, I had the confidence of sharing the analysis before knowing the result in a public forum, as I always do. You may look at the other stock analysis. 
in my forum and also on my Twitter page that is twitter.com Sagarnandi. Let me end today's session with the usual sector level analysis. One month sector performance looking at the 11 sectors across three periods. Red bars are for this week, green bars for the previous week and the blue bars for two weeks prior to that. You can see the gradual weakness clearly. This week all the sectors are down. Zero sector is up, all 11 sectors are down. One week ago, two sectors were up, nine were down, and two weeks before that, eight were up, three were down. You can clearly see the sector strength deteriorating over time. This week, all the 11 sectors are down and they are down by large percentages, except utilities, which is also down, but by a smaller percentage. Defensive, non-defensive, all sectors are down, that is further showing the weakness of the market. Let me look at Friday with a magnifying glass, because Friday the market dropped sharply. I showed just now that over one week period, all the sectors are down. Over today also all sectors are down and on Friday certainly all sectors are down. Friday's drop was huge across all the sectors. The magenta colored bars in this graph show Friday's price move. And all the sectors are down, even utilities. If we look at the sector percentage heat map, on Friday, everything fell down heavily. Utilities was relatively stronger, but everything fell. And some fell very heavily. Infotech is the worst performer. If we look at the industries, on Friday, only five industries are up, 143 are down. Not a time to take long trades, isn't it? What about the stocks? If we look at the stock scorecard, and this list has more than 1,500 stocks, only 90 of them went up on Friday and 1,412 went down. At every level, you can find bearishness weekly level and certainly on Friday. I am not going to look at more stocks. I am anyway sharing them regularly on my forum. I shared possible bearish trading ideas on Friday also. Let me summarize. The market is looking bearish. One week ago I was indecisive about the market that changed. This week market ETFs, several of them broke below memory support. Nasdaq and NYC market breadth is bearish. The index constituent analysis is showing bearishness for all the USA major indices and not only that, we can see bearishness in all global market indices also. When we look at the sector breadth, that is also bearish. Industry level is bearish and the stocks are also bearish. This is not a time to take new long trades. You may protect your existing bullish positions and look for short trades. The short trades are expected to give sizable profit if the market weakness continues. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.